at the start of the year, you know, that the narrative of Carmelo going to Houston was that he could sacrifice something in order for something greater, which as you guys know, is an NBA championship. But what has happened in Houston is that it is just same old Melo. He's gonna want to fit his style of play. He's got tired legs, like Steve Bonet said. So he's not gonna be as good of an outside shooter as he was in past years. And he's still not gonna play defense, right? You got to defend in order to win an NBA championship. Everyone knows that. That's why the Houston Rockets bought back Jeff Bezelik from retirement. But here was what the timing of this really symbolizes is, is that the NBA is truly scripted if you think about it because Carmelo played his last game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. His only basket came on a goal 10 that game. Still did not play defense. So the team, he was having a negative influence around them because he was not playing defense, right? That's not what they bought him to, uh, to Houston to do. So I find that very funny. That's the last team he played for, he ended up playing his last game against. But not many people were familiar with the Houston Rockets defensive coordinator, Jeff Baselic, who has rejoined the team. He was the force behind that top-notch switch defense from last year. They bring him back. They get right of the bum, Carmelo Anthony, right before facing the Golden State Warriors this Thursday. The first game after Carmelo Anthony was officially no longer a Houston Rocket, came against the Denver Nuggets. Now, the funny thing about that is that, number one, that's who Carmelo was drafted by. That's who he played for. So, you know, this whole move for Carmelo was scripted to begin with. And, you know, Carmelo wasn't going to change. So, if he wasn't going to change, if he wasn't going to put in the work to become a champion, well, guess what? We're going to pick the timing to get rid of you with the right opponents, what not syncing up with the right build up for that necessary week, which is what this is all about. Now, what people do not know about Jeff Bezelik was that he was with the Denver Nuggets when Carmelo Anthony was there. So there's that funny twist, get rid of Melo, bringing back Jeff Bezelik because Carmelo Anthony did not like Jeff Bezelik. He did not like him. At the start of the year, it looked like it was really coded for Carmelo Anthony to win an NBA championship. And this was how it was all meant to be. The seemed like Carmelo was going to have an opportunity to win an NBA championship. But nothing has changed. Because if you look at the Golden State Warriors, if they lose their fourth game against the Houston Rockets, well, that's what is going to symbolize who the champion of the Western Conference is going to be. You see, the team that's going to end the Warriors' NBA final streak of four we see a lot of four action in the nba four straight finals appearances for the cavaliers four seasons with the miami heat four seasons with the lakers for the king king four letters right this is what this is all about carmelo anthony got jeff baselic fired in denver now i'm not familiar with all the details but he did get him fired in denver and you just cannot overlook the fact that all of these events happened at the perfect time. Melo's last game once again with his old team, the Thunder. Melo leaving right before the, the Rockets faced his former team, the Denver Nuggets, this past Monday, I think it was. And Jeff Bezelik used to be with the Denver Nuggets and Melo got him fired in Denver in the first place. So my main point, this riddle has been solved. When Jeff Bezelik is back and he is getting the Rockets to ball it up on both ends of the floor like we need to see for this team this year, this is going to be an ultimate test to overcome the loss of Patrick Beverly and Trevor Reza. 
Now I got you guys an update on Trevor Arisa. He hasn't been defending well here in Phoenix. So I don't know if you lost Trevor Arisa, but Patrick Beverly, that guy can ball. He can. He's a very lengthy player. He's got a nice outside shot. He can defend very well. That's a solid role player that the Houston Rockets have to find a way to compensate. And Jimmy Butler is not in Houston. So who do you go out in the All-Star break? Try and make your team better. That's really the next step for the Houston Rockets is who are they going to get during the All-Star break? Who are they going to give up? So look out for that switch defense and look out for the Rockets to really improve that area of their game once they have them back full time. Jeff Bezoic, uh, check out the links below. I will be back with a pregame for Thursday's game between the Rockets and the Warriors. What a sports night that is, baby! 12th man, CIO, Aaron Rodgers, sixth spot in the playoffs. And are the Rockets going to show that they're going to be a contender this year? How are they going to handle the Golden State Warriors? That's a perfect sports night, and I will be back with who Le'Veon Bell is going to end up signing with. By the numbers, this may be pretty easy, and I would urge you not to overthink that. So that's the lineup for today. And once again, now the bum and what is, is, is lack of defense and refusing to pass the ball. Good fucking riddance, man. I realize this is scripted, but damn good riddance, Mellow.